1. This story takes place back when I was a shy, naive college freshman looking for love in all the wrong places. I wasn't exactly your typical neckbait, but apparently appealed to the more discerning beard looking for a milady with tastes beyond the usual fare of anime and niche pop culture. I had an interest in many things which fit that bill, but was trying to expand my horizons as I approached real adulthood. This also included an attempt to break out of my introverted shell and meet new people, and thus, I met Greekbeard. Our cast. Me, Novelina, female, brunette, of average everything, 19 at the time, freshman English major, and aspiring writer with too much smarts and not enough sense of self-respect. Word nerd, dreaming of love and attempting to shrug off my high school persona of lonely, quiet girl. Greekbeard. So called for his Greek ancestry he never shut up about, despite he and his parents all being born and raised in the US. He seemed to think it gave him super special powers of cultural understanding over the classics and mythology. Greater than that of even the professor who was teaching us. But that's a later story. Dark haired but pale as a fish's underbelly. About three years older than me. To my shame, my second ever boyfriend. I'll begin with some setup. The class we met in was Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales, and from Go, it was bound to be a difficult one. The Canterbury Tales was written in the late 14th century, back when the English language hadn't been standardized, and featured a nearly completely different system of pronunciation. The punchline. Our copy of the tales was uncut and untranslated from the original Middle English. We were going to be studying the language as much as the text. And, though I was excited to take a crack at it, I and everybody else I spoke to were nervous about what would be expected of us. That is, everybody except for Greekbeard. He strode in on the first day of class like he owned it, writing his name on the whiteboard in bold capital letters and announcing his presence with all the drama he thought he deserved. This drew some half-hearted chuckles from the students who had already taken a seat. He wasn't exactly your standard neckbeard. He was only an inch or so taller than me. 5'4", relatively trim, and was mercifully free of the stink of hell and Doritos so many neckbeards cultivate. He did, however, wear a fedora. It was a black and grey pinstriped number he wore almost every day I saw him, and he was not afraid to tip it. He also had a beard which, while full, extended more down to his neck than his face, and curled in tight little bunches like, yes, pubes. He owned anime shirts, but that day he seemed to have made an effort to blend in. Altogether, he almost passed for normal. Pity me, listeners. At the time, I had no knowledge of the neck beard, and so I mistook the early warning signs for confidence and mere fashion faux pas. My resolution, to be more social in mind, I took a deep breath and approached him. Hi, I'm Novelina, so have you taken a look at our book yet? Greek beard at your service. He tipped his fedora and slid into the seat next to me. Oh yeah, he said, waving a hand dismissively. I'm pretty well up on Chaucer already, though. So this should be a pretty easy class, I mean. I like to peruse the classics in my spare time. Joys, Hemingway, the great Greek epic poems. How about you? The question held just a hint of a challenge. Like when another neckbeard might ask, And how many X-Men can you name, huh? Well, this is a little new for me, I admitted. I've mostly been into fantasy up to now, but I love history too, and English has a really interesting history, and the Canterbury Tales was such a... He held up a hand to stop me. I see, he drawled. You know, I could help you a lot. This is kind of my... thing. Oh, thanks. It was all I could think to say. I should have hunkered down in my seat and attempted to ignore him, but, alas, I later found myself agreeing to lunch with him. What could it hurt? I was at a point in my life when it seemed like any male attention was good attention, and he seemed, more or less, unobjectionable. Maybe a little conceited, but that was hardly unusual for an English undergrad. And so, a few days later, we had lunch at the little diner on campus. Things were going all right. Greekbeard waxed poetic about the beauty and value of certain texts over others. I made mention of my attempts to write a high fantasy novel, and he went on and on about his foray into world-building. 
He then scrawled what was supposed to be a mock-up of his fictional continent in my notebook, when his was right there in his backpack. Having as little dating experience as I did, when he asked me if I'd like to do this again, I said yes. As a date date, though, he said, seems like you've got worthy interests. Most girls these days aren't into the highbrow. I'm pretty selective. I suppose he meant that as a compliment. Oh, but I have to ask. He glanced side to side and whispered, Are you a virgin? Stunned into silence at the bluntness of the question. I didn't answer for a few seconds. Why? I asked, inching back into my seat. Oh, good, he said, grinning with a smarmy twinkle in his eyes. I can see that you are. I'm saving myself for marriage, and I'd rather date girls who plan to as well. Purity is such an underrated quality. So important for a real connection later on. He said real connection like the words were sweet and he wanted to taste them. Maybe give them a good lick too. I didn't know what to think. I felt like he had caught me out. I was a virgin and I did plan on saving myself for marriage. Religious and personal thing. But the way he put everything made my skin crawl. I wanted to storm out with a few choice words about asking inappropriate questions and making assumptions. And yet, a nasty voice in the back of my head told me I should be grateful, honored even. Here was a guy who seemed to want a relationship beyond sex. Wasn't that what I wanted? And how likely I was, a girl of no particular attractions, to find somebody else like that in a sea of guys looking for a quick hookup. So we started dating. In the five or so months of our relationship, he embarrassed me in public, belittled my academic success in the face of his own mediocrity, took every opportunity to aggrandize himself, and bonus, came out as a furry shortly after we broke up. As for myself, worry not, listeners. Dating Greekbeard was exactly the wake-up call I needed to actually come into my own. And now I am happily married to a good man who loves and respects me and living far, far away from the scene of my time with Greekbeard. I will write about the more egregious incidents of neckbeardery from that time shortly, but I felt it was necessary to post a beginning in full, so the rest of the tale can be understood. And to any women and girls out there who recognize in themselves the insecurity that I had as a freshman in college, please take this as a cautionary tale. You will always deserve to have better than what a neckbeard is selling. 2. So my girlfriend used to love cosplay and then go to cons to showcase them, operative words being used to. She was usually conservative and didn't show much skin, more out of habit than morals, but I suggested she should try on something more revealing for the upcoming local convention, because why not try out something new? She agreed. And after much deciding, we ordered a Playboy bunny outfit, themed to Diva from Overwatch. What a great idea. So we're at the con now, and she's dressed up like a centerfold with creepy, sweaty dudes practically groping everything with their eyes all lolling out. Sometimes we would split up to see different things, and whenever I would meet back up with her, I shit you not, the air around me would get at least 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer, probably the collective blood rushing to all the dudes' heads around us. Both heads. Yuck. And then the fun starts. Some bony dude out in the crowd passes us, and he says loudly, I would revive you any time, diva! Or something. It was innocent enough, and she did laugh at it, but to the rest of the sweaty virgins in the herd, it signaled as only one thing. You could talk to her. Then, like vultures to their dying prey, they surrounded and circled us, eagerly waiting for their chance to give their flirt, poorly disguised as a shitty pun or inside joke. Bless me with a self-destruct. Those aren't micro-missiles. Blizzard can't nerf that. Each statement became more cringy and less clever. We were getting increasingly and incredibly uncomfortable. We took one look at each other and knew we had the same thought. We had to get her out of that ASAP. There was just one problem, we were smack dab in the middle of the floor, and the long road home was filled with the likes of greasy fingers, horrible breath, and lack of understanding of personal space. Because she always wore less revealing clothes, we had no experience with this, and thus, were solely underprepared for the journey ahead. The people around us constricted and strangled our route, as if 
some of those gross dudes wanted to accidentally brush up against her. To deter that, I walked closely in front of her to split open the sea of weebs for safe passage. But my physical body could not block the mental anguish that was these weirdos hitting on her. Despite the very clear physical signs that we were dating. Finally, we were a few steps out of the convention center. A few hops out of the toxic, salty air. I can see natural light. My hope is quickly dashed as this ogre of a man waddles through the door to go inside. At least six feet and three inches tall, and 350 pounds. This gargantuan, who smelled like a fucking rotten onion, and had a beard covering his whole necks, blocked my way like a final boss of this great journey. There are stains in his shirt that features a bunch of anime girls orgasming. Diva among them. He eyes my girlfriend up and down, then utters the words I can never forget. Uh, hey, D diva Can I touch your mecha tits? Motherfucker didn't even deliver it without stammering. She was mortified. This was almost the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I held back the urge to deck the guy and simply walk around him, making sure to keep her as far as possible from the dude. He just stares at me with this snide as fuck smile on his face, like, If you weren't here, I'd be her gentleman right now. Outside, we rush back to the hotel and get her changed out of it right away. We did not go back, and have not been to a con since that terrifying debacle. These days, we like to laugh about it and bring it up as the Mecca incident. But back then, our fear was as palpable in the air as the desperate horniness of everyone around us in a 45-foot radius. One out of ten. The food was kinda alright, and the security that was supposed to respond to inappropriate conduct was a literal joke. Would not recommend. Three. This is a cautionary tale of how my life was almost ruined by a neckbeard we'll call Pokeybeard. Names and minor details have been changed to avoid my identity being revealed. Grab your Doritos and waifu pillow because we're in for a ride. I had just gotten out of a long-term relationship a few months prior and was, in hindsight, lonely and vulnerable. I would frequently hang out with the same group of friends. We were all slightly nerdy, in our mid-twenties, and either still in college or had just recently graduated. Among this group of friends was Pokeybeard. Pokeybeard was a small, thin, mousy guy with short, curly hair. He didn't wear a fedora or have a beard, but liked anime and video games. He worked in IT, and was really smart and funny. We hit it off, and started hanging out alone, which led to us dating shortly after. He was amazing at first. We were so happy together, and had so much fun. He was everything I ever wanted in a partner, and I felt like the luckiest woman in the world. I was 25 at the start of the tale, and he was 23. But just like Pokemon, neckbeards evolve. I should have ran when I met his best friend from high school who lived out of state, Sam. Sam was a textbook neckbeard. Pokebeard looked up to him and admired everything about him. Their friendship was super creepy and very uncomfortable for everyone to be around. Hugging, petting, cuddling, and sitting on each other's laps were common occurrences. They even owned the same pair of toe shoes. Sam had a girlfriend who was a bit of a legbeard, but she didn't like being out in public places and had some pretty bad anxiety, so she wasn't around too much at first. Bogebeard confided in me that he had a massive crush on her in high school, but no one knew. This is important later. Over the next months, Pokebeard started his evolution from a funny, lovable nerd into the glorious neckbeard butterfly he would become. He started to randomly skip showers, and when called out on it, he would say, I do what I want, in his best Cartman voice. His hair started to get long, but instead of cutting it, he decided he wanted to grow it out into a Jufro, his words, not mine, like he had in high school. Pokebeard was of Irish ancestry and not the slightest bit Jewish. I called him out on it and got his I do what I want Cartman impression in response. His hair had thinned a little since high school, so instead of it being a fluffy dome of curls, it would part in the middle. Like if you stuck two wedges of cheese together with the points touching. Then he decided to pick up Pokemon again after years of not playing it. 
Now when Pokebeard wanted to be the very best at something like no one ever was, he would devote himself 100%. He bought every Pokemon game ever, and decided to beat all of them. He collected every Pokemon and spent countless hours trying to come up with the best builds. He would even do this at work, where he worked in a building of several hundred people. One month, the most visited website in the building was the Pokemon Wiki page. Then came the languages. When he would get drunk, in public and private, he would allegedly forget English and try to communicate in French or other more cultured languages. This was completely humiliating in public. He also started to watch more anime and decided to start speaking Japanese by adding San to the end of names and rambling the same few phrases over and over. He would randomly sneak up and practice martial arts moves on me without touching me because he was quick and accurate like a ninja. He would always tell me that if I ever ended up pregnant, he would falcon punch my stomach. He would then wind up his fists and yell falcon punch, and pretended to punch me in the stomach. I would tell him to knock it off, but occasionally he would do this in front of people. I could go on for days. One day a miracle happened, and he got the job of a lifetime several hours away. This just so happened to be close to where Sam, our neckbeard king, and his girlfriend turned fiancé lived. Things were still okay with us despite his neckbeardy ways. He asked me to marry him and go with him. I was not happy in my job and situation, so I said yes and decided to join him on this merry adventure. Soon after I moved in with him, I realized I was the fourth wheel on this tricycle of terror. I eventually was included, until Sam's fiancé's sister decided to move down there to start college. We'll call her Giggles. She was fresh out of high school and about 17. About two years had passed since the start of this tale, so he and I were now 25 and 27 respectively. Suddenly I was excluded from this circle again. But this time it was different. I can't put my finger on it, but my spidey senses were on fire. One time I was at Sam's house with all of them, Giggles included. Giggles was a massive weeb and would screech in made-up Japanese giggle to herself <laughs> and shrieking Kia like schoolgirls in anime. She started hopping around the house like a fairy princess, and then Pokebeard started hopping after her, directly behind her. They looked like two kangaroos in heat. I sat there speechless and wide-eyed, we drove home in silence, strike one. When we got home, I asked what all the hopping and creepy behavior was about. He blew up and got super defensive, strike two. A few days later, they all decided to play Pokemon at Sam's house. I was not invited, because clearly I wasn't cool enough to hang with the cool kids. He never came home and decided to spend the night on the floor, strike three. When he got home the next day, I blew up and said I should just move back home. He agreed, and that was the end of it. He denied ever having feelings for giggles, but they became Facebook official a month later. It's been six years since this all went down, and they're still together. And I'm currently living a neckbeard-free life. Almost. Friends don't let friends date neckbeards. 4. Hey all. Thought it was time to finish up my tale of Wolverine Beard, or, more accurately, Fat Badger. Like I said last time, the encounter in the shop was not the end of this tale, but simply a to-be-continued. After that day, and much to the disappointment of my now older, zero-fucks-giving self, I avoided returning to my normal haunts. In fact, I stayed out of town altogether. I hoped this absence would throw Fat Badger off the scent and eventually... I would be able to return. Unfortunately, I had two hopes, and one of those was Bob, and he's dead. A close friend of mine received a friend request a few weeks after the meeting at the shop, and messaged me in curiosity. She told me that someone had tried to add her and that his profile picture was of a comic book character. I was immediately alarmed and told her to reject it. Luckily, she already had, but he sent her a message. Scratch that. He sent her several messages. They started off innocently. Hey, how are you? You're Lottie's friend, right? I saw her in your pictures. From there, he began to inquire about me. I saw that you guys went to lunch at such and such a place. Did you have a good time? 
Lottie looks really nice. I'm Logan, by the way. Me and Lottie are close. As I mentioned last time, my few close friends are rather protective of me because of my autism. This particular friend I'd known since we were five. We'd been in the same classes throughout school. Although she is a rather relaxed individual, she's not someone to start poking, especially in regards to me. I'm told it was difficult for her to restrain herself and not answer him, telling him to sling his hook. She instead messaged me, informing me that a guy named Logan had been asking about me and had been telling her how close we were. Horrified, I asked her to block him, which she'd already done, and we moved on as best we could. There was a gap of about four, maybe five years where, despite my occasional counter with a neckbeard, I heard nothing from Fat Badger. In fact, I forgot about him. Now years later, in a new career, one of which I'm still in and dearly love, and with a newfound confidence in myself, having embraced everything I am, I decided to be a bit more adventurous with my nerdy interests. Twice a year in my hometown, there's a comic convention. This happens throughout several cities in the UK, but the ones in my hometown are every March and November. I'd already attended four of these cons, usually with a friend, and every time it had been a blast. Roll on March of this year. I'd been seeing a guy for a while, maybe eight or nine months, and with my love of comics and his interest in all things The Punisher, we made a good team. He'd missed the first opportunity to accompany me to the convention, as he said he'd had to work. So we made plans for this march, and we were all set. Come the day, drama unfolded. I won't explain in detail here, but it turned out he had another steady girlfriend, who he decided to bring along with us. I bailed, not up for a fight, and spent the morning and afternoon wandering the con alone and calling my friends to laugh at the mess that I'd gotten myself in. It was the first time I'd done something like this alone and found the freedom was amazing. Ah, but I hear you all huffing and moaning. Where does Fat Badger come into this? Well, dear reader, I was being stalked. But my stalker was not recognizable. Oh no, he transformed. Evolved, even. For Wolverine Beard had become Joker Beard. I wish I was joking. No pun intended. I'm an avid user of Instagram. I have a few nerdy friends from across the world on there, and we like and comment each other's pictures of each other's favorite comics or the new figurine someone had gotten. It was a real help in making me feel like less of a loser. Upon making it inside the convention hall, I was one of the first through the doors. I'd taken a selfie and tagged my location. This picture would have been one of thousands taken that weekend. I paused my compulsive shopping around lunch to grab food from a vendor, and while I sat on the floor surrounded by bags of goodies, I ate and checked my phone. I had the usual likes and a couple of comments from friends, telling me to enjoy my day or wishing they could be there. But among the notifications for comments, there was one from a profile I didn't know. Under my picture, the comment read, I saw you walk past. I waved and you ignored me and a sad face. Apparently, in my hyper-focused stupor, I ignored someone trying to get my attention and I felt somewhat guilty. That guilt soon disappeared, though, when I read the accompanying private message. Hi, Lottie, it's Logan. I saw you by the Daleks and waved. You walked past me and didn't say hi. I was very offended. I thought we were friends. You blocked me too, why? That made me really sad, and I almost hurt myself. You look nice, by the way, but I'd have preferred you in Harley Quinn cosplay. Over the years he'd been blocked, I'd bleached my hair to within an inch of its life, and now had platinum blonde hair. Needless to say, that was the end of my day as my paranoia had peaked. Between trying to avoid the guy who'd brought along his girlfriend, and Fat Badger, I was done. I took my loot and a taxi home, but I'd slipped up. I'd forgotten to block him, and when I got home, I'd been tagged in a photo. There he was, Fat Badger, but no longer looking like Fat Badger. He wore the costume of the Joker, the one from the Dark Knight, and had painted his face, double chin and white beard. He'd made an attempt at the smudged makeup, but really it only made him look like a toddler who'd gotten into his mom's makeup bag. I think the best description I could give for his cosplay would be 
Imagine if the Joker ate Batman. I was very glad I hadn't seen him. I think I'd have had nightmares. In the days that followed, I was bombarded with messages. Hi! Hey! Hello! How are you? He sent me his phone number out of the blue. He tagged me in two more pictures from Comic-Con. One, to my disgust, was a selfie with me in the background. I was obviously looking at a plushie stall and wasn't quite facing his direction, but it was very obviously me from my custom-painted bite-me fanboy denim waistcoat. I took this so there'd be a picture of us together. He'd gotten that close. WTF, I finally broke and messaged back. I'd had enough. I thought you weren't talking to me. I wasn't, but you've just tagged me in a picture taken without my knowledge. How dare you? I'm sorry. I don't care. I'm sorry. Get lost. I just wanted to meet up with you. So you took a picture of me without knowing. What is it, wank material? He continued to beg my forgiveness and kept telling me how much respect he had for me and would never keep my photo for such debauched reasons. I was furious. I didn't want to meet up with you. Had I known you were there, I would have avoided you anyway. Okay. Okay, is that it? Are you being arsy now because I wouldn't have spoken to you? You were creeping on me like you did the first time, and you're the one getting arsy. What if I'd been with a boyfriend? Would you have been so creepy then? Are you being sarcastic? I gave a little laugh and shot back. Not at all. I would have walked away if I saw you with another man. That only made me angry at the other guy who'd set me up. I wouldn't have been seen as fair game to Fat Badger had I been on another guy's arm. I stopped answering after that but I watched on curiously as he vented in my inbox. He ranted about how every girl he fell for had a partner, and it just wasn't fair. He moaned that he'd wanted to ask me out, and that I'd blocked him, and that it wasn't ladylike, and that I was a bitch. And like that, it was over. He was gone. He blocked me. I was awestruck. Fat Badger, my very own neckbeardy superhero, was gone. Five. Hello. This is the story of the Fedora Neckbeard douche at my cousin's wedding. Of course, my husband and I spot him as soon as we walk into the reception. Fedora douche was wearing bright colored suspenders, had sweat stains around his armpits, and he's about two months late for a face and neck shave. After we find our seats, we see Fedora douche hopping from table to table with beer in hands, tipping his fedora at more than enough girls. All the poor gals in Fedora Dushi's warpath would shudder, shuffle quickly away, or get a look on their faces that made me think they just smelled sour milk. Things progress like this until I step outside for a cigarette. Fedora Dush unfortunately saw me step outside without my husband. He comes out of the door, looks around, spots me, then sauntered over with his thumbs in his suspenders, crumbs in his beard, even more sweat on his shirt than before, Fedora Douche asks what I smoke. I held up the cigarette in my hand as proof, saying nothing nor making eye contact. Oh, that's cool. I'm more of a vape guy. Then this creep-tastic crap factory starts blowing these billowing vape clouds in my face. I ask him to stop, and he did, to my surprise, but it gets worse. After telling me stories about his skills with a katana, he suddenly stopped talking. Fedora Dush points at my wedding ring and tells me my husband is probably a Chad who treats me like shit. Uh-oh. He tells me how beautiful I am and that men like my husband will use me for the rest of my life. And I'm just too wonderful for that. I tell him I'm very happy with my marriage. I will continue to be happy with him. I didn't want to make a scene at my cousin's wedding, so I take another route, so I just turned away. I lit up another cigarette and walk around toward a cousin the most smiley and kind gal. I spotted who was also having a smoke. I start a conversation with her. I'm happy I got rid of him. Nope. He was standing a few feet behind me under an awning in a shadowy type area. He jumps out and yells, Hey! This obviously startled me. But he took no notice of my scared face, my gasp, and the fact that I stepped back several steps. Fedora Dush started talking about what a nice guy he is. How girls just don't appreciate eccentric men. 
and how he's sure my husband is just a muscled up Chad. He then asks my cousin if I should give a nice guy like him a shot. She doesn't laugh or smile. She looks into his face and tells him that even if I weren't married, she would never approve of a crusty and smelly creep that stalks random women around at weddings. Badurudush gets a scared puppy look on his greasy face, turned to me and said, You want to give me a chance, right? I said that I absolutely would not be considering it. He flipped his lid and started calling me a cunt and a whore for leading him on. At this time I'd had enough, I told him to fuck off and walked away. He spent the rest of the evening in a corner drinking cores in a can with his face in his phone. When the party was dying off, I noticed he's staring in our direction. Whatever. It doesn't bother me since we'll be leaving soon. Apparently Fedora Dush had gotten much more drunk than we thought. I was walking out with my cousin and my husband whose hand I was holding. And he walks up and blocks our exit. He's now clearly wasted. Through his mumbles, all I could make out was fucking chads and I'm a nice guy. Fedora Dush started drooling all over his greasy neckbeard and swaying around. That's when salvation came in the form of police officers. They came up on the other side of the door and carry, slash drag, him to their cruiser. It turns out the female bartender had a cop husband who was on duty. He just happened to be rolling past the place to check on her, and she told him about this garbage pile of a human. He went to jail that night on multiple charges. Drunk and disorderly, indecent exposure, and a warrant that was out for a DUI. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Neckbeards in the Wild, number 14. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use and sent in stories for use in this video. It's not often I get to break out the Joker voice, so it was, it was probably a little bit rusty, but it's so much fun to do. Although hell on the vocal cords. Okay, and as it's a weekend, I'll keep the outro a little bit short. Uh, I have yummy snacks awaiting me, so I'm, I'm going to go eat before I pass out. So until next time... Thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.